Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian and this is that episode of the week where I tell you which guys you should consider adding to your team to help you secure that victory for this week, week 14 of the fantasy hockey season. Before we get started guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Tip. I'm constantly posting updates there to help you guys win each and every week of the fantasy hockey season. Let's jump right into the schedule for this weekend now, guys. And as you can see here, on Friday there are 16 games, on Saturday there are 22, and on Sunday there are 10. So all three nights are relatively busy nights. But in all likelihood, if you look at your schedule, you probably, if you do have room for a forward, it'll probably be on Friday and Sunday. But everyone's lineup is going to be different. Some people are going to be able to fit on Friday, Saturday. Some people are going to be able to fit on Saturday, Sunday. Some people might be able to fit a player on all three nights. It's absolutely possible. So I'm going to be talking about first players that play on Friday and Saturday, then players that play on Friday and Sunday, and then players that play Saturday, Sunday. So players that you can consider streaming for those Friday and Saturday games are from the following teams. Arizona, Carolina, Chicago, Detroit, Minnesota, the Islanders, the Rangers, and the Tampa Bay Lightning all play on both Friday and Saturday. So the number one guy for me to stream for those Friday and Saturday games is Matt Zuccarello, 52% owned. And I think, honestly, I can't believe that he is only 50% owned because at this point, Zuccarello has been one of the best players in the league all year round. He's over a point per game the entire season. And for some reason, he's only 50% owned, which is absolutely crazy. So if you do stream him for those Friday and Saturday games, maybe hold on to him as well because he has honestly been excellent all year and has excellent chemistry with Kaprizov. Then I have Joel Eriksson who's playing with Greenway and Foligno and he does well on that line. He did very well on that line last year and He's been doing very, very well for himself all year round. Don't hesitate in streaming Joel Eriksson Neck if he's available. Then I have Anthony Shirelli of the Tampa Bay Lightning. 42% owned, gets to play on a line with Stamkos and Killorn. Doesn't get top power play, but you're playing on a line with Stamkos and Killorn, and he's been doing very, very well lately. Then I have Clayton Keller of the Arizona Coyotes. Has been absolutely stellar over the past, almost the whole season at this point. And at this point, guys, I don't know why he's only 36% owned because he honestly has been a really good player all year round. Then I have Lawson Kraus of the Arizona Coyotes, who's only this high if you are in a league that counts hits because he offers you a very safe floor every single night because he hits a lot. He also shoots the puck a pretty decent amount, and he has been putting a lot of points in this season. So Kraus makes for a pretty safe pick. Then Anders Lee and Wallstrom of the New York Islanders. Lee plays on that top line with Barzell, and Wallstrom plays on the third line with Pajot, but top power play, and he has a pretty nasty shot, so both make for pretty good streamers for those two days. Then I have Matthew Boldy, who's currently skating on the third line with Kevin Fiala, but is seeing top power play time, and ever since he started playing for Minnesota, has looked pretty good, and has managed a point per game pace. Then I have Martin Natchez, who plays on the second line with Vincent Trocek, hasn't been spectacular this year, but is pretty safe, right? He's not been great, but he's not been bad all year round. So Natures is obviously a decent streamer if nobody better is there. Then I have Brock Nelson who centers the Islanders second line and second power play. Obviously not the best option in the world, but someone who offers a relatively safe floor. Then I have Jonathan Taves who's been playing much better as of late, been recording almost a point every single game. Honestly, I could have him a little bit higher on this list, but I have Jonathan Taves at number 10. Then I have Phil Kessel of the Arizona Coyotes playing on the line with Lawson Kraus, who I already mentioned and Johan Larson, who's been doing relatively well lately. And we all know Phil Kessel, he's a pretty good player and probably will end up being traded later on in the season. But for now, he makes for a pretty decent streamer for those Friday and Saturday games. Then I have Seth Jarvis, who's playing on the top line with Sebastian Ajo, which is definitely a good place to be, so I don't mind streaming him. Then I have Nemesnikov and Fabry, and Nemesnikov is actually playing on the top line with Larkin and Lucas Raymond, so I like that deployment. And Fabry's playing on the second line with Pew Suter and Tyler Bertuzzi, but I like Fabry because he also gets to play on that top power play. And last but not least, I have Philip Hedl and Capo Kako. Kako plays with Zibanejad on the top line, and Philip Hedl's playing with Panarin on the second line and is on a four-game point streak, so honestly, there are definitely worse options than Philip Hedl. Moving on to some Friday and Sunday streamer forwards, and the teams that you're going to want to stream players from are Columbus, Florida, Pittsburgh, Seattle, St. Louis, and Vancouver, because those are the teams that play both Friday and Sunday. The number one guy to stream if you're looking for a guy that plays those two days is Boone Jenner. Boone Jenner has been excellent all year round, top line center, top power play center, and has been a pretty much a point per game all year round. Absolutely love the ad 
for those days. Next, I have Braden Shen of the St. Louis Blues, and he's right now practicing on the top line with O'Reilly and David Perron, and is also practicing on that top power play. And in his last game, he got four points, so definitely someone I'm really liking to stream right now. Then I have Anton Lindell of the Florida Panthers. He's only centering their third line, but he's been really good lately, and Florida's third line is probably better than any other third line in the league. Then I have Jeff Carter of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and yeah, he was demoted down to the third line with Malkin back, but the third line does feature Rodriguez, and he's been solid all year round, so I don't see why he wouldn't continue to produce. Then I have Jared McCann of the Seattle Kraken, who's centering that top line and top power play, and he's been pretty solid all year, so he's number five on my list. Then I have Connor Garland of the Vancouver Canucks, who's 58% owned, but right now is on the COVID list. He's eligible to come back off the COVID list on Friday, though, so if he does, he makes for a pretty solid stream. I have him at number six. Then I have Oliver Bjorkstrand, who's skating on the top line with Boone Jenner and on that top power play with Jenner, and he's been pretty solid all year, and I really like him as a player. I think he's super underrated. Then I have Robert Thomas, who's skating on the third line in St. Louis with Brandon Saad and Jordan Cairo, if you can even call that a third line. It's a really good line. Thomas has been really solid all year. Don't mind the stream there either. Then I have Jordan Everly of the Seattle Kraken playing on the top line top power play with Jared McCann, so a good streamer there. Patrick Hornquist of the Florida Panthers plays on their fourth line but does offer a pretty safe floor because he hits and he shoots a decent amount. Then I have Kasperi Kapanen of the Pittsburgh Penguins who plays on the second line now with Evgeny Malkin and Jason Zucker. Also gets second power play time. Obviously not the best streamer in the world, but I don't hate it either. Then I have Jakob Voracek of the Columbus Blue Jackets who should be eligible to come back from COVID protocol also on Friday. So if Voracek does return, I don't mind him as a streamer. He should play on that top power play as well. Then I have Tanner Pearson of the Vancouver Canucks, only 10% owned, but is playing on the top line with Brock Besser and JT Miller, and is also now getting top power play tie in Vancouver, and he's been doing very, very well. So Pearson is honestly a really good streamer at this point. Then I have Brandon Side, who I already kind of mentioned, plays with Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo on that third line in St. Louis. Not my favorite option, but definitely not a bad option. Then I have Alexandre Texier and even Sean Corrali of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Both have been pretty decent all year, and Sean Corrali also offers you a pretty safe floor night in and night out. Now, if you want to stream a player for Saturday and Sunday, there are only three teams that play both Saturday and Sunday. Those three teams are New Jersey, Ottawa, and Winnipeg. So number one guy to grab if you're looking for someone to stream is Josh Norris. Centers that top line with Batherson and Kachuk. Also that top power play. He's been excellent all year. I can't understand why he's only 55% owned. Then I have Andrew Kopp of the Winnipeg Jets, who's also playing in their top six and has been pretty solid all year round. Don't mind him as a streamer. Then I have Jesper Bratt of the New Jersey Devils, who's playing on the second line with Sharon Govich and with Jack Hughes. I like that line a lot, and Bratt's been awesome all year round. Then I have Nico Hishier, who's playing on a line with Zaka and with Thomas Tatar, also a pretty solid line, like him as a streamer. Then I have Paul Stastny of the Winnipeg Jets, and he should be back by the time Winnipeg plays this weekend. And Stastny should slot in on that top line with Mark Scheifele, which is definitely a great place to be. Then I have Pavel Zaka of the New Jersey Devils, who's playing on that line with Nico Hishier and Thomas Sitar, a line that I like a lot. I think he's a very solid streamer, and he also gets to play on that top power play. Tim Stutzla gets to play on that top power play in Ottawa, and also gets to center that second line. I think he's a pretty solid streamer as well. Then I have Thomas Sitar, who I already kind of mentioned, plays on that top line with Zaka and Hishier and may also get some top power play time in New Jersey. Tatar makes for a really good streamer. Then I have Alex Formanton of the Ottawa Senators, who's playing on that second line with Tim Stutzla and has been doing very, very well lately. Then I have Yegor Sharangovich of the New Jersey Devils, who gets to play on a line with Jack Hughes. And Jesper Brett, arguably the two best players on the Devils. I like that deployment a lot. Then I have Dawson Mercer of the Devils, who's been pretty solid all year, but right now is only on the third line in New Jersey and second power play. So don't love the deployment, but I do like the player a lot, which is why I have him at number 11. Then I have Nick Paul of the Ottawa Center, who's playing on their third line, but he's a decent player, so I don't hate him as a streamer. Then I have Zach Sanford of the Ottawa Senators. He's playing on their second line with Formanton and Stutzla, so I don't hate him as a streamer. And then I have Andreas Janssen of the New Jersey Devils, who's also playing on the third line with Dawson Mercer, and he's super, super streaky. So if you get him on a good night, the dude could score like two or three goals. If you get him on a bad night, he's going to do absolutely nothing. So that's why I don't absolutely love him as a streamer, because he is really risky. But if you do need someone who has a really big upside, it is Andreas Janssen. All right, so what if you need some defensemen for this weekend? Well, the number one guy for me to add, as long as you're in a hits league, is Radko Gudis. 
He's 57% owned and plays on Friday and Sunday, but the dude offers you a safe floor every single night due to that hitting upside. Then I have Noah Dobson of the New York Islanders, 33% owned, and he mans their top power play and has been really solid lately. Last game, he had seven shots on goal. Dude offers a really good floor lately, and he's a really solid player. Then I have Alex Goligoski of the Minnesota Wild. He's on a career high point percentage, which is crazy considering how old this guy is and honestly makes for a really solid streamer. Then I have Shane Gostaspear of the Arizona Coyotes, who's manning their top power play and has been putting up points all year round. Damon Severson is also manning the Devils' top power play now that Dougie Hamilton is out for quite a little while. So Damon Severson makes for a really good defenseman streamer as well. Hold them for as long as as Hamilton's out because he'll do pretty good for you. Then I have Josh Morrissey of the Winnipeg Jets who offers you a safe floor due to some peripherals. Brady Shea, who's been really hot lately. Jakob Slavin, who's been pretty decent all year. Nothing too crazy, but makes for a relatively decent streamer if he's available. Luke Shen, who offers you a really nice floor since the dude's been hitting four times per game this year. Also blocks one or two shots per game. So definitely a nice floor there. Won't get you points though. Then Gustav Florsling, who's been pretty decent all year. Not too many peripherals, but has been managing to put up points every once in a while, which has made him, you know, fantasy viable-ish all season. And Brett Pesci of the Carolina Hurricanes, who's also been pretty decent, blocks some shots, puts up a point every once in a while, so it makes him fantasy viable as well. Then I have Tyler Myers, who offers you a very safe floor with the shots, blocks, and hits that he puts up every single night, so definitely someone who will get you that floor if that's what you need. Then I have Colton Pareko of the St. Louis Blues, who also is pretty good for a safe floor. Floor. Moving on to the categories league section of the video now. And if you need guys that are going to get you some shots on goal because you need to catch up on that category or you need to maintain your lead in that category, the number one guy to add for me is Jeff Carter. He's been shooting 3.3 times per game all season, which is pretty good. If you're streaming him for two games, you'll get six to seven shots, which is really good. Then Jacob Chikrin should be back for the Arizona Coyotes. He shoots over three times per game as well. Joel Erickson X shoots three times per game. Clayton Keller shoots 2.9. Zucker shoots 2.8. And Oliver Wallstrom also shoots 2.8. Now, what if you need some blocks? Well, the number one guy to stream would be Connor Murphy for those two games. He blocks 2.6 shots per game. So if you stream him for two games, you'll get about five blocks. Colton Pareko blocks 2.3 times per game. Jake McCabe, 2.3. Tyler Myers, 2.2. Calvin DeHaan, 2.1. And Ryan Lindgren, 2.1. Now, if you need some hits, the number one guy to grab is Radko Gudis. He hits 4.5 times per game, which is absolutely incredible. Then Ryan Reeves, 4.3 times per game. Luke Shen, 4.0. Cal Clutterbuck, 3.9. And Zach Aston Reese, 3.8. Now, if you need to catch up on faceoff wins, well, the number one guy to stream is Jonathan Taves. Wins 11.6 faceoffs per game. Boone Jenner is not far behind with 11.1 faceoffs per game. Nico Heeshear with 10.3 faceoffs one per game. Jean Gabriel Pajot with 9.5 per game. Jordan Stahl with 9.4. And Michael McLeod with 9.2. He's only 2% owned, so if all the other guys are already rostered, this guy may still be available. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hope you guys enjoyed the content today, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.